Hey, what's going on, G-Verse? Just, I got off an awful phone call. And it's not awful because the call itself was awful. It was one of my clients hit me up for a really different kind of consult. Because he's good. You know, good guy, married, and, you know, he used to be a corporate rat six years ago, got laid off, started his own business, was doing okay. Then I uh, found YouTube videos, kind of started following me. I mean, he's what I call a long term consult client. You know, we're up to maybe 10 so far. So the business is doing well, but he's got a problem. He doesn't have a degree. His wife does. Wife works in a nonprofit. He is being assaulted because they have a daughter who's getting ready to go to college. And the daughter and the wife wants her to be a social worker, but she wants to go to, I think, William and Mary. If you know what William and Mary, it's not a cheap school. I think it's 30, 40 G's a year. Seriously, I'm not exaggerating. And they're looking at him to pay it. And he just, two years ago, got his head above water. You know, there's always money in the house. Bills are taken care of. He's stacking up his retirement funds. And he knows that this, because it's, it's more than just the tuition. It's the room and board. It's, it's a lot of other things that go on to it. So he picked her going to that school about 50 G's a year. He is like can't sleep because he doesn't want to do it. He's just like, I just climbed out of a hole. And he said, you know, she's my daughter and everything, but she's not that smart. And I was just like trying to suppress the giggle, right? Because he's like, look, you know, I'm a real parent. It's like, you know, she's my, my baby girl and I love her. And I think she should go to community college. So there is this big fight in his house because they want her to go, i.e. mom and the daughter. And he doesn't want to do it because he says it's going to put me in a position where I'm struggling again. And, you know, I just, like I said, two years ago, it's been nice. And here we go again. And he's like, what should I do? And I was like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. This is beyond my scope of, uh, uh, you know, I'll give, you know, if it was me, I'll tell you what I would do if I was in that situation. Uh, you know, once again, at the end of the day, you got to sleep in that bed and you got to sleep in that house and you have to deal with both of them. And they're looking at you with some angry and garage right now because he's like I don't want to do it you know it's like uh, he even said that you know he spent the night in the hotel because it got so rough in the house that he just walked out and I mean it's I feel for him right I, I really do because I know where he's coming from she's going to school very expensive school to get a liberal arts degree that just not going to repay be a return on investment and he is kind of like about to lose it in more ways than one. So I gave him what I'm doing. I was like, number one, you've got to first diffuse the situation. You got to calm this down because they're not going to hear you. They're, you know, all of them, you are <sighs> Beelzebub. You know, you're you're the you're Mr. Evil. No one's listening to you, even though you're the one that's going to be writing the big ass checks. So this is what you do. You just know, just go to them and say, look. We need some space on this and I need some more clarity. And let's just table this for six weeks and let's do some due diligence and let's look at it. Because see, you're not saying no, okay? You're not saying no, but you're not saying yes. And in the six weeks, let things decompress because right now anything you say that is not what they want. And, you know, he admitted to me that, you know, the young lady is spoiled. And I was like, oh, damn. Well, you did that too. You said it wasn't him. It was the grandparents. And it was the wife. You know, and every time that he tried to... It, it, it kind of brings up a thing. Like, if you're a guy that's a disciplinarian in today's society, you're looked upon as some kind of ogre. It just is. You know, this whole faux self-esteem thing. And I was like, dude, stick to your guns. But you, you're going to have to elevate your mentality here. You're going to have to elevate your mentality. Because the way that you're going, you know, you, you're leaving the house. You're spending the night in the hotel. You, this is your family. You, you've got to work on it. And I understand where you're coming from. And I understand where they're coming from. They're coming from 
Daddy got it. I want it. And if he love me, he gonna give it to me. That's that's what's going on. So I was like, well, I have a daughter, and you know, our deal is until she figures out what the hell she wants to do in college, she ain't going. Because you know, another thing with this is she can go to William and Mary and meet other people and be introduced to new ideas and not want to do that anymore, which is going to lengthen the time it takes her to finish college, therefore increasing the cost. And that's something else he's worried about because, you know, when she was in school, she changed her ideals a lot. She was always changing her mind. And he's like, I don't want to. I was like, dude. So get the six weeks, get some clarity. And, you know, I'm going to just ask you a question. How tight are you and your wife? And he says, we're pretty good. And I was like, okay, this is another question. I'm not trying to be indelicate here, but have you ever cheated on her? And he said, no. Cool. Okay, so she has nothing to throw in your face. And he said, uh, that's not entirely true, right? <laughs> He's like, we've had some issues about some stuff. And uh, he said, there was a time that we separated and I left the house and she didn't know where I was for six months. And I was like, dude, you cheated on your wife. He said, well, actually, I didn't, but, you know, I was like, in her mind, you cheated, so therefore, you cheated. No proof is needed in this court of law, none, so you're screwed there. So that's that's going to be coming at you. And I got a question for you, and this is going to be a very serious question. What would you do if you ended up divorced and, you know, not part of that family unit anymore? And you're silent. He's like... I think I'd be happier. <laughs> I was like, damn. So this thing, this house is on fire, okay? This house is on fire. And he's just like, I don't really want to go that route. But he's like, I did the math. If I do what they want, you know, I'll have my family. But chances of retirement may be slim to none. And it's like, dude, dude, dude. So take six weeks. So we're, we're kind of working on that because I feel a little indebted to helping this guy, but it's it's like trying to close the door after the horses ran out. A lot of things that are making these attitudes happen have been in effect for years, if not decades. And that's just not something that you're going to be able to change or eradicate or come to a new understanding very quickly. It can be done, but you've got to do something different. So, you know, I told him what he needed to do to protect himself because I said, the number one thing that's helping you is you have your own business. Number two, you tried to get the wife in. She refused to come in. That actually will benefit you going forward if things get ugly, 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 ugly. So go ahead and uh, just start spending some time with your daughter. You know, go to lunch, hang out with her and just really start talking to her and try to impress on her the importance in the cost of this step just be frank i mean she's gonna she's growing up she's gonna become a woman she's gotta know how much this you know don't shield her from this because you know you've done the good thing by starting this business but dude is just like terrified because you know he puts away about 30 g's a year for retirement because you know he had to start all over and he just this will not this will be pretty much not putting any way, money away for retirement and there's another kid so this is another trap. If you do that for kid number one, you got to do it for kid number two. So you start doing the math. And this guy, this is why he's like freaking. I was like, well, you know, make her get student loans, make it on her. And it's like, you know, she didn't want to do student loans. Um, and then it just get deeper. It's like, well, you know, my wife said, well, you paid off my student loans. <laughs> I feel for this guy. I actually dumped a chick who had about $185,000 in student loans. When I heard that, I was, I'm out. Because uh, you love someone and they have that kind of debt, and you, it's, it's going to become yours. I don't care, you know, it, realistically, it shouldn't be yours. But if you're the man and that's the woman and she's got that level of debt, it's going to be yours if you marry her. And that's what he did. He paid it. So he's got some stuff going on. And. I gave him some more information that I can't tell you about because, you know, it's, it's very, can't tell you about that stuff because it is really sad that when you're successful that people kind of take it for granted. And I also told him some stuff about himself. I was like, apparently you didn't really spend a lot of time with these kids because you don't know them. And, uh, 
you know, it's like, hey, I've been there, entrepreneur, been there. It's real easy to happen because, you know, you're, you're building that business. You, you think that you're doing the right thing. And next thing you know, 10 years have gone by. So it's not too late, dude. Not too late. So just as much time as you can, take her to your work, take her to your business. And also create, spend as much time with her as possible. That, that's that's going to be the key. That's like spend as much time with her as possible because as long as she and your wife um, commiserate, you will never have a chance because I kind of I can't even get into this because it's too personal but I kind of picked up on some other stuff that was happening and he's like yep so part of this is payback for some stuff he's done he's done some stuff he's, his hands are not clean but neither are theirs everyone's hands are pretty dirty except for the kids I would say you know if kids fall that's usually a parental problem and um, it, it's just amazing what happens in the expectations that happen to you because I kind of had something similar happen when I wrote my first book because my mom was going through some stuff and you know if you don't know the story like when I was in the military I had to take care of my family for three years because my mom was legally blind you know I was a kid taking care of a family I didn't have any money you know everyone else was balling out doing all this other stuff but you know it was fam so I did it and you know 2009 it was like, and I just like, hey, I'm not doing this again. No, 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 no. My goal was to spend three years in the military and try to walk on to the University of Alabama football team. That was my goal. That didn't happen. And I was like, no, we're not doing this again. So, you know, there was some hurt feelings and stuff, and people um, said stuff, and, you know, to this day there are things that are said. But you have to really evaluate what you want your life to be. And sometimes you got to cut family I mean I know it's very controversial there's a lot of people sometimes you just got to cut family because I have had the benefit of being on the inside track of seeing some awesome families and the thing is from the awesome families that I know of and you know there's there's an Asian family there's a black family there's a Jewish family and there's a white family that I was really closely and still closely connected to some of those families Everybody in the family is working hard to be something. You know, go to Thanksgiving, you know, PhD, doc. Everybody is doing something. Business. Everyone is doing something with their life. There's no one that's just sucking the family dry, so to speak. So, and these are what I consider, you know, and that's just my opinion, what I consider amazing families. Everybody is trying to make the family proud by not being a yard bird then you get families where you got slackers and coasters and people who are spoiled that to me doesn't make a strong family but that, you know once again that's my opinion because I'm grateful that I wasn't spoiled um, I'll tell an ugly little story I did something wrong as a kid right really 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 wrong got in a lot of freaking trouble and I had to pay for that shit that took me what five minutes to do for a month my feet were held to the fire for a month do you think I did that shit again uh, no no and when you know that's kind of like I, I raise my kids and I get called like you know the, the the antichrist and stuff it's like god you're so hard like um my daughter lives with me right and you know yeah I got a vehicle I have one vehicle did I buy her a car nope Am I planning on buying her a car? Nope. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Because the way that I live, if I give that to my kids, they will be worthless going forward in life. They can't live. I mean, they didn't earn this. And, you know, I've talked to friends and they're just like, yeah, you know, you can do a little bit more. And I was like, no, 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 no. And I know that that makes me a very odd duck in today's world because, um, I want my kids to be strong, powerful, and able to go out and do shit on their own versus being dependent on others. And I see that a lot of kids can't leave the house at 29 and 30 and 40. There's times that, you know, I've met women who were in their 30s and 40s. They had to move back home with mom and dad. You know, that's regression if you didn't know. And I'm just like, what happened? And it's like, well, I got divorced or this happened. Really? You couldn't, I mean... You know, it's just kind of hard to respect someone like that. It just really is. So, <clears throat> you get these people that do, do this stuff, and it creates 
a mindset that blocks out what's possible. There's so many things that are possible in the world today, and you have people who don't see it because they don't have to see it because someone's taking care of them. And like I was telling him, it's like, you know, this is a serious pivotal point in her life <clears throat> because if you do this, the expectation of anyone she meets is he's going to be just like daddy here, or if he's not like daddy, he's not worth my time. And I agree with you. I think, you know, if she wants to go to this expensive ass school, she should pay for it herself. That's just how I think. Uh, you know, I would tell my daughter the same thing. But it kind of goes back to accountability and it goes back to uh, better choices because, you know, I had this conversation with my daughter. It was like, you know, if it's not engineering, science, technical, or something like that, chances are you better go to community college and get that degree as cheap as possible if that's what you want to do because you go somewhere nice, they're going to have a nice price tag to it, but, <clears throat> you know, chances of you working at Walmart, Starbucks, Costco, these aren't bad jobs or bad companies, but the pay is not going to be enough to service that student loan debt. So from a numbers point, it doesn't make any sense. From an emotional point, you know, because I've had this conversation, like, you know, there was someone who got pissed at me because it's like, you know, well, you know, people don't go to school to learn. They go there and groom their minds and stuff. It's kind of hard to groom your mind when you are living on the street. You're going to have another kind of grooming. It's called grooming and survival. But just put your thoughts and comments down there because, like I said, there's a lot I can't tell you. Um, but it's amazing what people go through when they're successful and the expectations. And, you know, fellas, you know, if you get married and you have a wife and you create this partnership where she doesn't work, never, ever cheat, piss her off. <laughs> Don't do it because you will be screwed like you will. Ne oh, my God. What I've seen happen to some of my friends is ridiculous. Dudes have to pay for the dog to go to the salon. I mean, just... All that is is just payback, you know, get back and stuff. But, yeah, you got to be real careful about that one. And um, let's put your comments down. If you had a daughter, yeah, let's, this, this is a scenario. You had a daughter, right, that wanted to go to William & Mary or some equivalently expensive school, wanted you to pay for it, and for you paying for it, you will not be able to fund your retirement. What would you do? I know what I would do. It's like, you can be a student loan getting little girl. <laughs> Ain't no way. Ain't no way. So what would you do? Let me know. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side.